Okay, hey everyone, and welcome to uh, welcome back from our break. I hope we all enjoyed the break because I did. <laughs> okay, um, if you're not looking, if you can't actually see my screen right now, the meeting minute is going to be in the chat. So please do all to write your name and then tell us a bit about how your day is going. Okay. So first and foremost, welcome back from the break. I, I hope we all had a good time. I did quite a lot of things during the break. I joined another community, that's one, and um, I slept a lot. <laughs> so I hope we all did exciting things during our break because that was what the break was meant for, to get your mental health in check. And um, since we're back from this long, beautiful break that we've gone on, we want to take time to focus or to create out focus groups for the Chaos Africa community. I don't know if you've gone through the Chaos website itself. You're going to see that there are different working groups. Let me see if I can just... Yeah, there are different working groups. Yeah, the essence for this is there are different um, focus points and you might not want to um, focus your attention on one aspect or all of it, but then you can decide to just focus on one area and do a lot of work there. So like there are quite a lot of working groups as you can see here. So that is what we want to achieve by creating mini focus groups in this meeting as well. So we can have meetups um, from time to time to discuss about this. So um, do you have an idea of how we're going to go about this? Yeah, sure. Um, so like in the last meeting, we kind of like, um, if you scroll up the doc, um, okay, I just said today we can send a reminder to everyone. Yeah, like I've been trying to do that at channel thing um but like you have to check the channel to know like there's a reminder of the general channel but i've been trying to do the ad channel thing on slack but it's not working it kind of like a lot of people but that's not working i don't know why but i think if it's um i'll show you a way to kind of like add the chaos um calendar to your your um google calendar so you can always like get reminders for the meetings because every meeting that happens on chaos is on the chaos calendar so you can get reminded for that um i think we can put it as someone can put it as the um last topic so that i don't forget as well and please feel free to add notes as usually during chaos meetings anybody can add in notes from what you are saying so um feel free to also add notes while we are talking or discussing something because sometimes I might forget or someone else might forget. So feel free to add in notes to the um, weekly meeting so anybody can take notes. So back to the focus group. So last, the last, I want to say last week, but yeah, the last meeting, the last meeting, we kind of like talked about like focus groups. Um, in the sense that we want to, so that it doesn't get overwhelming for everybody, like Anita said, there are like so okay. many working groups. Um, there are like so many other working groups, so it can get quite overwhelming. So we want to use focus groups to kind of like come in small small groups and talk about how um, we can help chaos or how we can contribute to chaos. So if you scroll up the doc, um, you'd see a doc here. Um, and if you do not have your, like your name, um, in this focus group, you can add your name to it. Like we have like different sections, developers, designers, um, technical Alpha. writers. Um, Juliet, Alpha. Yes. Try to mute. Um, sorry, I just muted you. Blessing your video. Um, your audio was interrupting. But if you want to say something, you can just raise your hand as well. Um, yeah, so we kind of like, you know, divided this, um, these main areas, right? So that we, and I have, I have set up like different, the different channels. Um, I've set up the different channels. Um, and if you're not in the channel, please just let me know as well. 
so that I can add you to it. Um, so we'll be using over this week or the following weeks, we want to kind of like do like um, meetings so that I get to, you know, interact with the different groups as well. And we see chaos from that light of how you're going to contribute Right, so um, please add your name in this and um, I'll be communicating with different groups. I created like Slack channels, not just the Chaos Africa channel, but like other Slack channels. So we'll be communicating through that to kind of like land on meeting because if you want to do that poll right now, it's, it's going to take a lot of our time. So yeah, so that's, um, that's it on that section. Okay. So if you, your name does not actually exist on this file that I'm looking at, it's on the meeting minute. You can just find it there and um, do what to fill in your details according to your focus area, of course. All right, so um, next agenda, we are discussing the care software tutorial by Shen. Is there a link to this particular um, tutorial that people could refer to? Okay, so um, it's also like on the um, calendar as well, like every meeting. I don't know if um, you could kind of go to that um, chaos community um, page, participate page, participate, um, yeah. So if you kind of come to this page, um, there's a way you can add this calendar if you scroll down um, so if you come to this page slash participate if you click on that place there like google calendar you can add this um, chaos calendar to your um, calendar and you just add it in so that you get reminded of different meetings right um, because um, for more context on that software um, tutoring so Sean is um, one of the maintainers for um, the Augur project um, in Chaos. That's the software project we have in Chaos, one of the software projects. So, and Sean is going to be doing like, um, I, th I don't think that's the one. Um, that one is for people in GSOC. Um, I think okay. July, July 9th, uh, it's on a Saturday, yeah, that one where, it's showing 6 a.m., but that's not like 6 a.m. Nigerian time, by the way. That, that's 6 a.m. Um, Central time, which is like 12 p.m. our time. So okay. if you're interested, this is mainly for people that are developers, right? Like for the developer focus group, I'm also going to post it in their own channel. Like if you're interested in, you know, understanding more about um, the two, the chaos softwares we have, you know how to run it a lot of all those questions sean is going to be running this um kind of like a workshop where you can ask all these questions so if you add this to your calendar you get to you get to understand more about you have time to ask those questions and you know interact more around what the software is about and how to use it and how to contribute as well so you can i would definitely recommend that you attend um, that um, workshop as well. I'll try as much as I can to be there too. So yeah, that's what that one. Yeah, so it happens bi-weekly. So you can always check out this for those who are developers and want to get into the chaos softwares. Now, another issue that we're going to be looking at is the code of conduct. This has been ongoing in for a while now, and um, do you have anything to add regards this? Okay, yeah, um, I do have something like, so with the last, uh, remember we had like a whole, a whole chaotic scene in the last um, meeting or the first meeting we had. And so I just wanted to, I think someone's asking for the link of the doc. So let me just quickly share it again. Okay, yeah, I just shared it. So if you, oh, okay, to the chaos page, I thought it was the doc you were asking. I'm oh, sorry, um, Ola. But yeah, thank you, Anita, for sharing. So we had like that whole um, chaotic situation, um, the first meeting, which I also apologize for that again. Um, I'm really sorry about that. 
but I wanted to kind of like run through like we have a code of conduct um you know in open source communities have a code of conduct and even at chaos we also have the, our own code of conduct and we have these standards that we really um live by well um you know that was not caused by anybody in the community we would want to um you know um inform you of our code of conduct which shows here about how you um you know um interact with other contributors you know you should respect their respect their space can you scroll up a bit um you like you see the standards here like examples of behavior that you know create like positive environment use i want to speak to using inclusive language so um one thing is um you know the world is kind of like advancing and you know we have um so many things are happening and you have to take note of that fact at chaos we we are we are we preach like diversity and inclusion a lot so using of um inclusive language let me give a very clear example so usually um if you check some people's um some people's slack um realize here i used people right and i know say guys right if you check some people or folks like if you check their slack handles you see that they have their pronouns they have their pronouns um you know there on their slack handle so you should um respect that because if somebody's pronoun is they or them you should address them as they and addressing the person as a he is not is not um an inclusive language right and when you're addressing a lot of people because you do not know their pronouns you can either address them by their first name or you can use they or like you can use people folks it's um inclusive and like using guys in a meeting is not inclusive right so these are things that you need to take note of and another thing is um there are different where it's a global community um while we have like chaos africa as well um we also have people that are not nigerians right people that are not um brought up in nigeria so there are some kind of there are some kind of um terms you would use you have to provide like provide context at every time like if you use a popular slang here in nigeria try to if try to provide enough context about that so the person does not find it offensive right so um that's another thing try to provide context when you use like local slangs um when you are speaking to somebody so all those there are so many of those things personally i had to learn you know um over the years and it takes time for you to learn it like i know when i started like i i use i use the word guys a lot but over time i had to like reconstruct that um language in me and just try to use people or folks every time i'm friends like a large group of people you get so you should always um, try to keep that in mind um you know being respectful to other people's viewpoints and experiences it's an open source um organization or an open source community and we respect everybody's idea is welcome like we we do not look down on people's ideas like no matter even though the person is not presenting it um properly we do not look down so be respectful to, to different people's like ideas you know and their experiences and try to give um and accept constructive criticism don't try to like it goes back to the same thing i was saying don't try to like look down on people's ideas try to if you're if you're giving feedback on something try to make sure that it's you know constructive and accepted like like um it's it's what someone can improve on and don't just try to like shun down the person's work and we try to show empathy you know it's one thing what chaos is about is we care for community health in open source and we should we should show that you know try to show empathy towards other community members and yeah so that these are like a list of unaccepted behavior you know use of sexualized language we do not troll here um, personal attacks um even public or private harassment or publishing each other's private information something like um email um, which i was going to also remove those emails that are on the agenda as well i said i'll do that later so someone can help us do that as well if you scroll down the agenda you see that there are a lot of emails so you can just help clear that off um please um because that's like private information and this is a public document so you can um just help clear that off and the, i think you're on the 
<laughs> you are blessed. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody can help us do that. Yeah. So yeah. So try to respect others' private information, and you know this is a professional setting. So please try to um or uh, abide to these things. Right. Also, we also have like project maintainers in the case where you feel that um, you're you're being harassed or you're being like a, that somebody verbally abused you or there's any form of um, anything you do not like that happened, you can there's um, you can reach out to me first, like within Chaos Africa, you know, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to Anita as well. Um, or you can reach out to like um, there are other project maintainers in chaos too. So always when you feel that someone is um, you know offensive to you or harmful to you, please do well to reach out and we'll take like necessary actions as well. And another thing is um, I think I would take um, put as a note as well when you're like if you want to invite someone to the chaos group, you could ask for the Slack link and let them join through that medium. Like, um, do not post the link outside of socials because it will kind of like, it, um, it will kind of like uh, invites a lot of, um, you know, people that are not really wanted here. So there are a lot of like people that I don't know whether they usually wait on socials or wait for people to just share links and they come and, you know, destroy the channel, but try not to, it's also like a general information. So try not to share meeting links um on twitter so yeah so that's all about the code of conduct if you have anything that you know you want you can also reach out to this person um who to contact um you can reach out to them as well so that's all on the code of conduct if you have any question um you can ask questions on that as well awesome yes yeah, so please let's do well to look through the code of conduct in case you missed out all that was said earlier. You can always just refer back to this document and get more information on that. And um, our next agenda is um, tracking a list of open source challenges. And I know originally when we started the call, we told you that that was the essence for putting together this community in the first place. And there's so many things about diversity, equity and inclusion within the African ecosystem that we could actually impact on as um, the Chaos Africa community. So that is what we're going to be doing today. So um, Fruits, what do you have to add regards this particular item? I think this is the discussion time <laughs> where I did not get to talk again because I've been talking a lot. So um, I think this is where we, like Anita said, the, the aim of the major aim of this group is to just so just look at us as um, I think imagine us as detectives. <laughs> I'll use that word. Um, but yeah, we are trying to see how we can solve um, open source community challenges here in Africa. Like what so the the question I want to pose out is what do you think um, what do you think prevents people from contributing to open source and make that question personal like apply it to yourself and you can use the raise hand feature um so we all go like in a a um my um good orderly manner rather so um what do you think are the challenges what do you think of first that prevent people from contributing to open source because the idea of this group is to you know, solve those, try to solve those challenges one after the other. So I see Ijoma has her hand, um, Ijoma's hand is raised. So yeah, Ijoma, you can go ahead. Hello everyone, nice to be here. Okay, um, so from my own personal experience, um, I've always wanted to contribute to open source, but because I don't write code, so, I, I didn't know how to start, okay. Um, I've joined Chaos before, probably last year, but everything was kind of very confusing and stuff because it was mostly, um, all, these, um, all these events that they have was mostly for developers and they don't really have um, much events for people that don't write code, so I was, very confused. I also joined layer five and 
it was still the same thing. I was, I, I even um, added their calendar to mine and most of the time I'll be seeing Meshuri, Meshuri, I was like, what's Meshuri? So all these things are some of the issues people are having with contributing to open source. So I, I feel like we, are, we, we need to, you know, keep putting it out there that people need to contribute to open source regardless of how technical you are. It could be true. That's why I joined as a community manager because I, I don't I don't know how well I can contribute outside aside that. So um, I can't even, I, I write, but I can't write as a technical writer because I'm not technical. And most times it feels like, yeah, you need to be technical to write technical um, articles. So um, aside from that, I don't know any other way um, a writer can you know contribute and um, probably through documentation but you also need to um, understand the project you're documenting about before you can you know it's it's just too technical if you're looking at it from an angle so i i'm, I'm just saying probably we should try to you know make it more inclusive so that people that don't write code can actually see um ways they can contribute because Right now, I, I don't know, okay. I'm, I'm just here to see how I can contribute as a community manager. So I guess going forward, um, I would be able to be useful probably. So yeah, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you very much, Yoma. That was like a lovely point you raised, um, which is like very, very important. Like. I, I I can relate I can relate to that as well. I think when I started, I really did not know how to how to get started because um I, I think I started when I was coding, like when I just learned how to code. So I, I did not really have my ground. So it was really hard for me starting to, you know, contribute. So I'd let um um I think whose hand was raised, Ayo's hand was raised to go ahead then we talk about how we how we can help as a community to each of the problems that have been raised or the challenges that have been raised. Okay. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so um yeah, I okay, one of the reasons why I actually um got involved with chaos um is, is very just the the whole idea of trying to care for the health of health of open source contributors so that kind of um, resonates with me and um yeah so i think the problem since we are africa focused um, i think one of the major issues is um our basic stuff like internet um internet connectivity and um also electricity um since this is an open source um community um first you need to know that um you you even need to have power or data to even come to the internet before you can even think about contributing to any open source project so and that's a big challenge um, in africa and um yeah so i don't know as a community you might not be able to okay solve every internet problem but then um as a community open source community can also help the contributors maybe in terms of um providing data data connection uh, data fonts and all that so that could also be a way we can um, help people and also encourage open source contribution so i'm going to talk more on also on the onboarding process um just like um, the other uh, person uh, mentioned the onboarding process in many open source projects is actually um, very poor. Um, you get to join join project and you don't really know much from the onboarding process. So you, at the end of the day, you get confused and you get thrown to a, you know confusion. You don't even know what to contribute to. You don't know have um, necessary knowledge about the project. So at the end of the day. Um, you're just like everyone, most people that, that are in the open source community, just there, just bearing the name as open source contributors, but they are not given the opportunity to actually make the correct impact. So another thing is, um, I think awareness, yeah, awareness, and I think this awareness would help a lot in terms of helping people know that you don't have to write code, yeah. 
So I think the awareness to solve the first problem the earlier speaker raised, um, you need to know that, okay, not just about the project you're con currently contributing to generally in open source, I think 6%, I don't know if I'm getting the statistics right, but six, just 6% is code, but every other thing has to do with not has to do with non code contribution. So just find out different ways you can contribute to open source. Most even most people in the community, open source community, contributing to open source community, most of them write code, but um, they found that community is where they can actually resonate more. So they decide to contribute in the community aspects. So even as a code, on writing code, you can contribute in other ways that doesn't involve code. So that's another thing. So awareness. So I think that's where we can actually um, work on creating that awareness on you know making people know about contribution to open source without code. Yeah, I think that would be all for me for now. Okay, okay. I think we had like other persons raise hands. Yeah, I think Shibel or I think Blessing raised. Um, Blessing raised. Um, then Shivel goes after blessing. Okay. Hi, good afternoon, Rose. Hi, everyone. Uh, so just like the first person said, um, not knowing where to start, right? Uh, me, for instance, I'm new to open source. I've always, you know, brought speakers up um, to my community events to come talk about open source and how to contribute. But then knowing where to start, where exactly do I start? you know, stuff like that. So I feel um, if we could have something like, um, I don't know, I'm just going to say this, but, you know, for those coding, they have like a boot camp on, you know, how to get started, like baby steps and all of that. I don't know if they do that with open source, but I think it's going to be a good way for people that are interested and then don't know how to start it. They can be like a boot camp or something. So yeah, that would be really great. So that is it for me. Okay. So, yeah, I, I totally agree. Boot comes as well. Like even talk, talking about mentoring programs that help people get up to speed. I think it's it's um you know relates to the challenge of onboarding process that help people get up to speed with like different um the different projects in the community. So yeah, um Thank you for your contribution, blessing. I think uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Um, so I think um, a couple of persons who have spoken mentioned certain things I was also going to speak about. Or um, I would still mention that during Oscar Buja, I was opportune to, you know, speak to a couple of persons about, you know, them contributing to open source and. You know, they're stating certain things that have been sort of like challenges to them. And so one of the persons I spoke with said, he, he's actually a good developer. And he says, he said he still doesn't see himself contributing to open source because he doesn't see sort of like a space for him to contribute to open source. And when I pushed for that to ask why, he said there's certain reasons like, Sometimes it doesn't even see the it doesn't even see where to start. Yes, the issues are there, the issues are stated, but you know, some of these projects don't have you know well labeled issues and all of that. And you know, people coming to contribute, it always seems sort of chaotic to many persons who come into the community and want to contribute. And so it says it doesn't see himself contributing for some reasons and for that reason. So and so Looking at it, some persons find it difficult to know where exactly to start. Yes, these issues are there. The projects need help, but how do people know where to start? And so from the discussion I had with this person also, stated that there are enough information, maybe not enough, but we have abundant information on Twitter and other platforms that you know, tell you you can contribute to open source. You no, know, you can contribute as a designer, you can contribute as a technical writer, you can contribute in different ways, but there are not enough programs and holding programs, targeted and holding programs that are directed at, let's say, designers. 
that are directed at technical writers, that are directed at community managers. Okay, this is how you can contribute. And we're going to hold your hand from the moment you start to making your first contribution and to making more contributions. Yes, we have persons, the onboarding process and meetings like this, but at the end of the day, people, so many persons need that hand holding right from the start, right from the onboarding. And you know, so just like Ruth mentioned, mentorship programs. And these mentorship programs you know, could be directed to these target persons with their, with their specific skills to help them make their contribution right from the first point to multiple other contributions they're going to make. Yeah, I, I think you actually have a point there. Like uh, when it comes like having in the, um, individual resources that actually educate people on how they can contribute to different aspects of open source, there's like very little or no knowledge on that. For instance, I know someone once said they, they're, they're program managers, but they don't see uh, resources on how program managers can contribute to open source. And they don't even know how to get started, which is like a really, really big challenge as of today, because there's so many persons that are willing to bring this skill set into open source, but then how to get started is a problem for them. Thank you. Yeah, I, I can relate with um, all of these challenges. And like I said, like look at every, like look at this community as a department or like detectives to try to solve one of like one by one from one of these um, challenges. Um, IODG can add that to the doc as well. I think that's also um, true. Like inactive or unresponsive maintainers to um, is also a reason. So I think we can go like, I think we have, do, does anybody have any other points like add before we, you know, go one by one and start? Not like we are doing everything on this call, but maybe we could pick out one from all these challenges we have listed out that we will move forward with starts. We can start up something, you know, bring up ideas on how we can uh, work on each of these challenges that we have listed. So does anyone have any more? things so like anything to add well i actually did have i have one but i think i also want to bring it to the chaos community i don't know like in terms of documentation i joined um, the good dogs project of recent and i realized that that is one community that is underrated in terms of documentation and open source because their aim basically is to set up templates and standards for open source projects maintainers to like create documentation according to those standards now the, these standards are of course open source standards kind of writing so like it has um targets areas of inclusivity uh, user diversity and all of this so like a lot of communities are not even aware that these templates exist yeah like a lot of communities are not aware that these templates exist. So you see so many persons writing documentations the way they feel they can write it. And as a user or as an open source person, you come in and you're like, okay, I want to learn from this, but this particular area is not here. And that's because the project owner is not even aware of open source communities that are responsible for this documentation or that they could actually reach out to to help with their documentation standards and all of that yeah very true i think yeah you can also bring it up as well we could we could like um you know do a scan through with like the good doc standard and check out documentation to like i think it starts from home before we got uh you know talk about documentation we should have good documentation ourselves right and I think there are some, there are some ongoing um, internships currently to work on documentation um, here in Chaos. I think the Augur um, project is also the outreach project is for the outreach this year is to work on one of the software project documentation, like revamping it. And then GSOD is revamping the handbook as well, which I am participating in. 
So I think the next thing we want to do now is okay. Um, let's. I think a major, a major. Um, I think the major one, the major challenge has come up a lot, is um around outreach, right? You know, making sure that people, or I think which which one is the major challenge has come up? Is it between outreach and onboarding? Which of them is? I think onboarding relates to onboarding. handholding programs. Yeah. Well, I think it's onboarding. Yeah, okay. Great. Even with all the outreach programs that have been done, a lot of people are not even able to like break past the first one month to two months in communities because they didn't get proper on onboarding process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like that's really true. Um, so I think I don't know how we want to um I'm, I'm also like i don't know how we want to start it like imagine you have a problem and you're trying to solve a problem so what where, where do we start from to solve the onboarding problem and we are not just solving onboarding problem within chaos community we're also solving like we're looking at african open source communities and we are trying to solve an onboarding problem so where do we start from like this like an open and that question, <laughs> like, where do we start from? Like, you have Africa as a whole, then you have you have this problem called onboarding, an onboarding challenge in open source communities. So where where do you think we can start from to solve these challenges? Could be resources, could be doing, could be teaching communities how to onboard. So yeah, just um, I do not want to put out my ideas. I just want to get as much ideas from everyone. So I think sugar raised. Okay, yeah. Okay, I think other person's raised. I should have waited. Okay. Um, so I personally personally feel if we're if we're to be able to, you know, walk through and at least make efforts to solve and then you know solve this particular problem which is onboarding since it's it has become sort of like a general problem in major open source communities i i feel and i think it would be best we you know first of all get to know these persons who are um, you know facing these problems get to hear from them and that has to do with sort of like would i say community research and user survey or something like that sort of like community survey get to hear from this because just as um, Ruth said we're not solving this problem just for the chaos community. It has to, you know, transcend beyond the chaos community, the general African open source community, because if that problem is solved in the general open source community, there'll be more contributions, there'll be more creators in the open source space. So it's best, I think, in my opinion, it's best we, you know, get to know, hear from these persons who are facing this problem. Just like, I think um, somebody mentioned that problem. So if we're able to dig deep, we'll get to you know, see the process this person actually faced, the challenge in that process, get to hear from other community members from several communities, gather these um, resources, gather this information, sorry, and then look at what exactly is the problem and how best we can approach the problem. That's my opinion. Thank you very much, Shiva. That was like really nice. Like I, I totally agree because before you get to know how people are facing a problem, you have to survey them. You have to hear from them, right? Because we are not just solving it for ourselves, but we're also solving like for the community. So I think Ijoma and Zuri's, um, yeah, Ijoma, you can go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, to add to what um Shebel said, um, we the onboarders, <laughs> if that's a word, we also need to understand these issues, right? We 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 also okay. If you are trying to onboard people into um, okay, currently I'm an onboarding manager for an open source community. So if you want to onboard people into um, a particular open source community or into a particular open source project, you personally need to know everything about this project, right? You, you, you don't just have to know it on the surface or because we have a lot of people contributing to open source when they don't even know what open source is all about, like deep, deep. They, they are just everywhere. They are just on the surface. They are just, you know, um, I'm contributing to open source. They just want to have that recognition. 
um, there. But you know, when when you have people like this as your on board, as it, it, it's it's as if we are going nowhere. Cause yeah, yeah, you want these people to help you on board new um, new people into the community or into the project, and they don't even understand this project deeply. They don't know much about open source and how it works. So it's it's gonna be a mess. So. Yeah, thank you. That really makes sense. Like, I think personally, so um, a little bit of um, story is that this is the first time, even though I've been like contributing to open source a lot, this is the first time I'm leading a community and it's been a new thing for me. And I have been trying to get myself up to speed with that. I've been trying to read a lot, you know, try to talk to people that have been doing it. So it's really true that we should, um, you know, get to understand the issue ourselves, right? So understand what we are trying to do and be be good on board as that's a word, be good on board as ourselves before we can, you know, bridge that gap. So I think um, Ayo had, Ayo raised two. So yeah, Ayo, you can go ahead. Okay, um, thank you. I think, yeah, I think most of the solution actually tied to the survey yeah, and that's um, a very excellent way to start from because of if since you're trying to solve a problem that is region specific you you cannot take the solution of solution that works for a region and expect that it works on another region so the survey is actually the first thing to go for and carry out a very good survey and you know ask these people the questions so once the survey is done from the survey, um, just like the last speaker mentioned, you can also train train the, um, I think the, the actual word is I like train the trainers. So you are training the onboarders, training them on how to actually carry out the onboarding process. So also for another thing you can derive from the survey is getting the right onboarding tools and resources. Um, yeah, that's another thing you can get from the, when you ask from the survey, you ask them the, the onboarding tools they have to use. Was it efficient for them on yes or no? So with that, you can you were able to, as an open source community, you're able to get the best um, type of onboarding tool that actually works, then the onboarding resources that actually works. Another thing I want to mention is the duration, the duration of the onboarding. Um, do you just um, maybe do onboarding for one day or three days or one month? So from the survey to that's actually tied to the survey. So the survey will actually have, help us to determine the duration of onboarding. So a, a lot of some, you start some jobs, some new jobs and a whole one month or two months, you're still onboarding. Why? Because they really wanted to get in-depth knowledge of that, of that company. They really want to understand the whole process. So the duration of onboarding and open source community is also important. So it's not in bad if you schedule a whole three weeks or one month just onboarding before you even start contributing to that, that project. You have to go that, through that series of onboarding and you know, it helps you to understand um, the project and the community uh, you know, whole. Yeah, I think that's... Um... Thank you very much, Ari. Like the point you raised are very important, right? I think Ijoma, you raised your hand again. I think they want yeah, to... I would love to add um, one more thing. Okay, yeah, we know um, onboarding can be quite stressful. And, you know, in fact, what we are working towards, it's something that, yeah, is going to be time consuming. So we need to be, yeah, prepared for this. Because, okay, when we onboard people into um, open source communities or projects, um, it's also good to know that you don't just onboard them and leave them there. Or it, it, I, I'm just gonna say, um, we we need to have um, some, okay, like the way um, Shiba pointed out, hand held, um, hand -held um, programs or something. We, we, we can also, sometimes people can pretend that yeah, yeah, um, they understood what the project is all about. But the most important thing is when we onboard you, can you contribute on your own self? Like we don't just want to onboard you because just for you to come and join the community and do nothing. We want to see you contribute. So I, I, I want to say when we onboard people, we also try to, you know, reach out um, 
like a continuous process of reaching out to them um, and also try to make them feel that, okay, you can always reach out to us or probably have um, a channel where people can just go there and probably rant or complain, you know, something like that so that we can address these issues from there. Okay, thank you for that, Adriana. I completely agree. Um, onboarding shouldn't be a one day, a one day thing. That's for a fact. Because um, most times when we, when we finish talking, I have to like go back to process everything that has been said, and that could take me a week to learn. So I think it's the same thing for onboarding. I'd also want to add that this survey would actually help us to know which um, onboarding processes. A lot of persons are comfortable with because they're different individuals and then uh, they're different people with different perspective how you're able to um, ingest uh, content might be different from the way another person might um, ingest things so like to help us to understand the different ways we can onboard people and make other persons comfortable as well yeah, totally. I'm sorry, I was taking a lot of notes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah so someone think... got their hands raised. Okay, someone did someone else raise their hand? I don't think I saw that. But please, if you also like want to contribute via chat, if you don't want to, you know, voice out, you can also do that. It's you can see like it's an interactive conversation, everybody's ideas, you know, being in, like we're all um together with this and I do not know it all, and we're all here to learn how, how to kind of tackle this onboarding challenge. I think we have done like a lot of, we've raised a lot of points which are really necessary. I think maybe like we always do action items here, like once we talk about something, right? We want to know what's the next step, what do we do next? So we are, we are all agreeing right now that we are going to be detectives to solving the onboarding challenge. Uh, for open source communities in Africa, right? I think I want like a yes or <laughs> so we we are all in it. Uh yeah, okay. That's a mighty yes. But that's that's great. Um so yeah, so I think the next step what we want to start doing is okay, we want to start building up the survey because then the survey is going to have questions, right? Um, we cannot just put out any survey out there. So I think the next thing we want to do is start building up the survey. So I'm going to start a document. We are not going to do that. Like our time is we're all, almost running out of time. So we are not going to do that. Maybe in the next meeting, we'll start creating up questions. People that have experience with creating surveys. Um, I have created a survey before, but not to this extent. So people that have experience with creating surveys, we can now do that on the next meeting, like next week. So um, I'm going to create a document right now, and I'm going to add it to, I'm going to add it to the meeting minutes where we can collaborate on creating, I think someone can put out their action item for me. Um, let me just put it, action item for me is create documents. Okay, so I think in the next meeting, we can now collaboratively work on creating that survey with the questions and the different um the different fields that um you know that would would be in that survey and then we'll start sharing it out on our socials and getting you know sharing it out on um, sharing doubt on different um, communities as well to get people's feedback because then we need people to fill this survey, right? So yeah, that's I think. Thank you everyone for like contributing to this. It's um, we are on a, in a very right, a uh, very good step. We have made a lot of. I think we've done a lot of things in just um and just some minutes. We've been able to bring out so many challenges, and we're starting with one which is a really good thing um, that we are going ahead with. So I think the next thing is, for this Slack reminder, I really do not know how to set it up, honestly, because 
okay, yeah, I could, there, there should be a way of automating that. Hmm. Yeah, normally, I think it's usually automated. Yeah. Hi, hi, Ruth. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, so I think since we are we are only focusing on those you already um, I think assigned to the groups we were, we have limited emails now so we can actually create a calendar I don't know maybe that would they can actually create a calendar now and add the this the selected emails we have on, on this doc then there is something on the calendar that is uh, we can set to recurring events mm -hmm. so first of First of um, there's Monday like the same time. So yeah, I think I think that was another thing we want to do. Kind of like move this meeting to Tuesday. I'll I'll okay. talk about that later, but just go ahead. Just okay, remember. so but like um once once you said that and and are you clear and you get, do people that are invited click yes so they kind of save it to their calendar. So even if you make changes or change the dates, it will also reflect on everybody's calendar. So every meeting they get reminded and you know till the, the your currency set expires yeah that that works but you know adding that calendar in like adding that calendar also does that for you right so and i i do not want it i want it to be opt-in in the sense that i'm also trying to remind people i want it to be opt-in i do not want to add somebody to like a the initial time the first meeting why i invited everybody because those people signed up to attend that first meeting right so i sent out calendar invites to everyone right but i didn't i didn't do it on a continuous thing except some people that are are you know have been contributing to chaos for like some years so that's the people i kept there because then they're supposed to be here right <laughs> But yeah, I want it to be opt-in actually. So if you do not want to add the whole calendar email to, to your um, Google calendar, just let me know how to add you personally to. I want that to be opt-in. I think I also put it in the channel that you can also do that. Now add you to it um, as well. So let it not be like um, we're imposing, you know, sending people random invites. Yep. Does that help like? Verify something so you are yes yes it does okay great yes. okay so i think this point i'll take like we we'll take questions we're almost like you know at the r uh, okay before questions sorry so usually we do not have if you check um anita can you like show the calendar yeah sure yeah if you see there are no like just it's just this algorithm related mentoring is just um a it's a gsoc thing so gsoc is google season of sorry google summer of code it's just a gsoc thing it's not the general meeting so if you can see it's only like on mondays and fridays we do not have it's a chaos thing not to have meetings on mondays and fridays like Mondays, people are just starting the week, and Fridays, people are tired. They want to just go and rest. So it's a chaos thing. So so we get to rest. So you see meetings are usually like Tuesdays, Wednesday, Thursday. So I want to propose we move this meeting to from next week to Tuesdays at the same time. So I don't know if, if that works for everybody. No, that works okay does it work okay works for pressures okay works for Lani. yes i'll also put it in the channel as well about the change moving the meeting so from next week it's not be monday again it's be like tuesday at the same time 2 p.m at the same time so we get to like everybody mondays are usually crazy for me and fridays are just i'm just tired i just want to rest right so everybody has their Mondays and their Fridays to themselves and there's no meeting and then we can do the uh, meetings on Tuesday so I'll put it in the channel I'll put it in the channel thank you everyone so yeah so we I think the few minutes we can take questions um let's take questions questions if you have any question or any concern any idea that you thought about for the community we are always welcome to to your ideas you know we are we are still growing and we need as much ideas as we can have
any questions? Okay. There, I think silence means yes on the <laughs> Okay, one more question. Who wants to facilitate next week? So is it rotating facilitation? Nobody, no one person um, does it all. So who wants to volunteer to facilitate the meeting next week? Okay. Mm. You can raise your hand if you want to. Things might be. Okay. There's no one. <laughs> People are yeah, asking no hands. <laughs> I think I will give one. <laughs> um, Ola, are you saying like the time is too early for you or? Okay, that's like one minute of silence. Oh, it's too early for you. Okay, um, sorry about that. Maybe what I don't know, we, we could do like a vote on timing. We can change the timing as well. You can put out the time that works for you because we want to also have you in the meeting. So is, is there a way we could do like a poll in Slack? Yeah, I think Slack does have that thing, but I think you need an app to do it. Mm, let me check. I'll try to see if I can do it, or I'll just put in random times. Okay. Oh, and okay, Ijomat serves is 2.30. Okay, we can, we can move it to 3 p.m. Or we, we can just vote on a poll. Since two people, it doesn't work for them, we can move it to 3 p.m. Okay, so yeah, I think if nobody's um can facilitate next week, um I can take up facilitation next week. So um yeah, I think we have come to the end of the meeting for today. It was really nice to hear from everybody and you know get your thoughts about everything. Um over the cup next week, I'm going to try to roll out decide on a, a, a day and a time that would we'll continue doing our next meetings except Mondays and Fridays and also um, decide um, kind of like converse with different focus groups. If you have any question, you can ask me on my DM uh, or you can put in the Chaos Africa channel. So yeah, let everyone have two minutes back to Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.